Today, I'm going to show you how to best tune your Harley Davidson Twin Cam 88 carburetor. Uh, this is based on my research I've done over the years and me experimenting on my own bike for quite a long time before I found the right tuning setup, uh, which was a year ago. So I've had this setup on my bike for a year now. And I can honestly say that it works absolutely fantastic. Great performance, great gas mileage, and looks very healthy and clean inside the carburetor. Um, because to me, tuning is not just about um, a performance increase, uh, getting more horsepower out of your engine, at the cost of um, gas mileage and your, the lifespan of your engine. Uh, does, that does not make any sense to me. Um, but of course, everybody's different. But in my opinion, if you want that much of an increase in power, uh, you're better off getting a larger engine. Uh, anyway, this tuning setup is very simple. Um, and the best thing about it is that you're gonna leave everything stock, except for the jet needle. But everything else will be stock and you're not going to be drilling and modifying anything. Um, because let's face it, when they designed this carburetor back in the factory, they did an amazing job with this. It, it, it really worked. Um, and you want to uh, do the least modification to it as possible. You don't want to mess it up. Now, you would have stripped the carburetor um, to give it a nice thorough clean before uh, tuning it. And um, I put the uh, float assembly back in here. Um, you wanna check the uh, float height um, as always and adjust if necessary. If you don't know how to do that, uh, go back to my video on float height check and adjustment. Um, you provided you've done that, we're gonna start installing your stock 45 slow. Um, so the first year, 1999, I, I have a 99 uh, Dyna Superglide, they had a 42 slow jet, but they quickly bumped it up uh, from 2000 to 45. So 45 is the stock slow jet. Trust me, you don't need a larger slow jet with this setup anyway. Snug it down. All right, now the needle jet and your emulsion tube. You need your stock emulsion tube, which has like five holes and then three and five again and three. If you have one of these performance tubes, emulsion tubes uh, with two holes, just put it aside and get a stock one. And make sure you're your needle jet is also stock. Um, some people have changed them. And for this setup, it needs to be stock. So it'll measure around 280. Right, so pop that in. Make sure you pop it in the right way. stock emulsion tube that's it snug it down followed by your 190 main jet if you have um, a 1999 model uh, they used a 185 main so but 190 was stock from 2000. Snug it down. All right. So as for the your mixture screw. Um, you want to you want it around three turns out, so just 
turn it all the way in, gently seat it, and provided it only protrudes like that much, just like half a millimeter, uh, then because some of the carbs I've I worked on, um, you know, some may have been messed about the thread and protrudes more, like uh, maybe a, a millimeter or two. So for that, obviously they need more uh, turns out, but if it's standard stock, it hasn't been molested, um, three turns out, so that's gonna be half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three should be adequate for you. Um, of course, it depends on your, what kind of exhaust you have on the bike, what sort of air cleaner you have on the bike, um, elevation, climate in your country. Uh, but in general, three turns out should be about the right setting. Um, I've run it with three turns out, three and one quarters. That was a little rich. Now it's in between three and an eighth. Um, but in a later video, I'm going to show you how to set the, uh, uh, the mixture, um, on the bike. So let's pop the, uh, the full bowl on here. All right, we're gonna put the accelerator pump assembly on here. Diaphragm, you got a spring, and you got the cover. Okay, now we need the slide. And I'm gonna show you something interesting. So this is um, this is a stock. It's a, it's a brand new slide uh, with a stock vacuum port. This is the one I polished up before, and it's it's nobody has drilled this hole, so it's stock. But look at some of these pistons, because some people believed before, and they posted videos that if you drill these holes, the, the, the ports, the vacuum ports, um, you're gonna have better throttle reaction, but it's it's not noticeable at all. I tried it, it's not noticeable. Uh, but what it does is it messes up the uh, the piston positioning. So returning to idle is, is kind of messed up and you, you tend to have higher idle for a while coming back from a highway cruise um, you know, stopping at a traffic light and st stuff like that. So it really messes it up. So stick to um, a stock piston. So it should measure two point forty six millimeters. This one, 241, so around 240, between 240 and uh, 245. And if yours is drilled out to something like this, uh, but if it's more than 2.8 millimeters, especially three, over three millimeters, uh, replace it. So you got your stock uh, slide and we're going to be using the famous Sportster 88 uh, needle. Uh, so this is called the uh, N65C needle and uh, what's special about this needle is that the, the uh, profile of the needle uh, is slimmer, especially at the, at the straight part because back in 1988, the carbs didn't have um, accelerator pumps. So they had to compensate 
uh, for the lack of an accelerator pump. So the, the, the needle had to be slimmer. And it works extremely well when, you, when you're tuning your carburetor. Um, so this is the, uh, the item number for it, HD27094-88. Um, CB Performance sells them in, in the US and um, in the UK over here, uh, Big Boar, uh, they also sell them. So with my experiments, um, I use three shim washers to raise the needle to make it perfect for the mid-range. So each of these shim washers measures uh, 0.3 millimeters. So altogether, we got 0.9 millimeters. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can find these shim washers and with the correct um, you know, measurements. Pop that in. Drop it in. Retainer. Make sure the diaphragm is in the groove and you're not pinching it. This is a good method. That's it, release. Get your dowel in here, need your bracket. Tighten these bolts. There you have it. A perfectly tuned carburetor. And of course, you're going to be um, adjusting the pilot screw, the mixture screw, um, on the bike while it's running uh, to fine tune it. I'm going to show you how to do that in a future video. Now, I want to bring the camera over to my bike to show you my carb. Um, like I said, I've had this setup, tuning setup on my bike for a year now, and this is the first time I've taken off the air cleaner just to show you how clean it is inside. And of course, having a catch can here uh, is very helpful. I might make a video on this as well uh, because the um, crankcase ventilation is not connected to the air cleaner anymore. So the hot gas and oil is not, you know, going into your carburetor, making it dirty. So, but this is a very nice, nice and clean carburetor with this setup. And of course, there's no popping um, and no sneezing and, and it's just, the performance is incredible. And I'm gonna talk about the, um, the uh, consumption in, in a bit. But of course, if you don't have lollipops in your Screaming Eagle, or w whatever you have, um, you know, check out my video on how to make lollipops for your bike for best performance. Because with that setup and the lollipops, it is an absolute beast. And I'm gonna show you quick just a carburetor with a very poor tuning setup that's just a carburetor I'm I'm about to refurbish and just look look at the black deposit in there and of course with with these pistons the drilled out slides look at the state of it 
Now, that's not healthy to me. So, finally, uh, let's talk about figures. So, consumption. Okay, I've done two tests. Um, so, one was um, really getting after it. Mixed riding, highway, town, um, and um, country roads. But really getting after it, a lot of wrist action. And that resulted in 5.7 liters to 100 kilometers. That translates into a US gallon, 41 miles to a gallon. UK gallon, uh, 50 miles to a gallon. Now, I've just done the second test where I was just doing cruising, also mixed, but just really taking it easy, cruising cruising on the uh, uh, beautiful country roads for the most part, um, 60 mile an hour, average. It went down to 4.5 liters to 100 kilometers. I was amazed. Uh, US gallon, 52 miles to a gallon. UK gallon, 62 miles to a gallon. So I think um, I'm quite happy with that. So anyway, I I'm, I really hope this video is helpful for you and uh, happy riding.